Well, hello there and welcome. It is Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on EWTN Radio. I'm Jerry Usher with Debbie Giorgiani and you. It is your show. We are, however, going to invite you to not call in today. It is a pre-recorded broadcast, original show. We love to give you original taped content whenever we are not able to be here on the air live. And so we appreciate you tuning in. And we really believe that we have a special treat for you on today's uh, today's conversation. Debbie, uh, you would agree with that, I'm sure. Absolutely, <laughs> Jerry. Um, we believe in the power of prayer. We absolutely are devoted to the Most Holy Rosary, and this pre-recorded uh, broadcast was um, prepared especially for you, our Take Two family, because you, you are really going to get a lot out of this episode. And when you do, we're not going to say if, when you do, please share it far and wide. Okay. So again, no live calls today, but we are happy to welcome to our broadcast Teresa Rodriguez. She is a dedicated member of the Rosary Team, bringing unwavering faith and compassion to her role with a profound devotion to spreading the spiritual practice of the Rosary. Teresa engages wholeheartedly in leading prayer sessions and fostering a sense of unity among the team members. Her commitment to nurturing a deep connection to faith and promoting a sense of community is evident in her warm and inclusive approach, making her an indispensable and cherished presence on the Rosary team. Teresa, welcome to Take Two. How are you doing? Hi, thank you for having me on to share the Rosary team. Well, yeah. Teresa, we, we love you so very, very much. And of course, your your husband, Leo, we love him as well. Um, but you are doing some uh, fabulous work in the community, uh, spreading the message, Our Lady's message of the Most Holy Rosary. And so take us back on how did you first become involved with the Rosary Team Ministry? What inspired you to join? Uh, give us the whole backstory. It's not because we're nosy, Teresa. It's because we love the details here on Take Two. Sure. I would love to share that with you. The Rosary Team started four years ago, and I was working as a hospice nurse, and I was seeing patients at a memory care facility. And one day, I was sitting with my patient and her husband and a caregiver was there, and we were talking and just remarking about how the residents here, they don't have any spiritual help. They have a lot of other activities, which are all really good activities, but nothing spiritual. And another family heard us talking, and they joined in our conversation. And the daughter named Helen, she was with her mom. And she said, you know, my mom loves the rosary. She prays the rosary every day. Maybe we can get the rosary here. And I said, you know, I can do that. You know, I'll ask some friends to see if they would like to come and pray the rosary with the residents. And at this time, I didn't even know if that was something that we would be allowed to do at a facility. And so I looked for the volunteer coordinator. Her name was Ashandra, and I asked her if, we could gather some residents and volunteers to pray the rosary, and she loved the idea. She was in full support of it. So that gave me a lot of motivation. And I went back to my parish that week. I had been leading a Bible study class there, and I asked my friends, the participants, if anybody would be interested in coming to the nursing home and praying with these residents. And I had my first two volunteers sign up, Sue and Marcella. So thank goodness that I got a yes from some volunteers, or maybe this would have never happened and grown like it has. Hmm. So they came back, and we started with our first rosary team with just two volunteers and one facility one day a week, and I thought I was done. <laughs> That's how it started. Wow. So as you were saying there, you you didn't see it maybe becoming anything a whole lot bigger than that. But uh, sometimes, you know, we were talking off the air about certain things, about how uh, God's plans sometimes surprise us a little bit. Have you been surprised at how this is kind of organically taken off and and what it's become uh, today? Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's so beautiful. I think our Blessed Mother really is so proud of all the volunteers who are working hard to bring the rosary to others. And I know that one of the reasons that I said yes at the time was because of my mom's 
faith, and she brought us all together, five siblings, every single evening to pray the rosary. And that was hard, right, when we were teenagers. And she got us to do that, and so it was natural for me to pray the rosary. So it seemed like something I could do in an easy yes. And I think that's what a lot of our volunteers feel like, too, is that this is something they can fit in in their lives one hour a week. And they tell me of all the beautiful benefits that they receive from it. I used to think in the beginning, oh, we're just there helping the residents. And we are, and the residents love it. They're so appreciative. But the volunteers love it, too. They tell me it's a privilege, and they use that word, it's a privilege to pray with these residents. It's just beautiful. So tell us, uh, Teresa, when did this ministry start? Did you have to get, um, you're in the Archdiocese of Denver, correct? So did you get, did you go to the, to Archbishop Aquila? Did you ask, you know, how, how did you give birth to this ministry? And then, and, and volunteer wise, how has it grown? Can you give us the details um, from that perspective? Sure. So we started with the, with those two volunteers and, you know, I kind of thought that I was done, right? I mean, I didn't see much more. And then a couple weeks later, um, Helen, one of the families that were there with her mom at the facility, she asked us to come in more. Mm -hmm. And so we added another day and I found two more volunteers and then she asked for another day. So I found two more volunteers and that's how we were at this one facility with six volunteers because that was right before COVID and then COVID happened. And as we all know, Mm. All the facilities were shut down to families and, of course, volunteers. And what we did during that time is that these six faithful volunteers did Zoom rosaries with the residents throughout this time. And it was Beautiful. Okay, hold, well, hold it right there. These Zoom rosaries, we're going to have to talk about that, but you hear the music. When we come back, more with Teresa Rodriguez from The Rosary Team. You can find it at um, therosaryteam.org. Please, folks, stay with us for this pre recorded broadcast. Great to have you tuned in today on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on EWTN Radio. Again, we're giving your fingers the day off because uh, not taking live calls, but we have a wonderful conversation underway with Teresa Rodriguez uh, representing the Rosary Team. And as Debbie said, you will find them at therosaryteam.org. They go into nursing homes and uh, send volunteers in there and pray the, the Most Holy Rosary. It is absolutely beautiful. And we'll continue that conversation right after I tell you that if you enjoy EWTN Bookmark Brief with Doug Keck, you can receive weekly emails, including a short video blog. It features the author giving a short synopsis of their work in his or her own words. So visit EWTN.com and click on subscribe to get the EWTN bookmark brief email. And Teresa, so happy, uh, so great to have you with us again. And you were just, uh, we, we uh, needed to pause for the break there, but you were talking about the, the, during COVID, you know, the Zoom rosaries, how those went to forward and you kept that, that beautiful prayer going. And also, uh, you know, we wanted to hear about, you know, your sort of your, the support that you've received from the, the church there in, in the Denver area. Sure. Yeah. So during COVID, the volunteers were not able to go in and they did Zoom rosaries, and at first I thought, oh my gosh, I don't know if this is enough, but we didn't have a choice, of course, and one day I was seeing a patient at the facility, and the activities director came over to a couple of the residents who always participated in the rosary, and she put her computer down in front of them, and the volunteers were on there to pray the rosary, and you could hear that rosary in that whole area, the kitchen, the dining room, and the living room. It was unbelievable. And I was just so proud of the volunteers to stick through that COVID time. And when that was done, which was almost a year and a half later, when they started to allow volunteers in again, I decided that I was going to try to grow 
this ministry to see if other facilities were interested in having volunteers come and pray with their residents. And I did and called a few facilities. They all happened to say yes. And I started working on finding more volunteers to go into those facilities. And at, during this time, I happened to um, be at an event and our Archbishop Aquila was there at the event and I explained to him what I was working on and I asked him for help with our mission statement. So we sat down and worked on the mission statement together and I love our mission statement that all will know the powerful love of Christ and that's what we're trying to do is to share God's love with others. And so the, our, our Archbishop has been very supportive of the Rosary team. Well, we we know that he is a man of prayer because Jerry and I, uh, we went on pilgrimage with him, Archbishop Aquila, um, to the Holy Land back in 2016, Jerry, I believe mm-hmm. so, 2016. Yeah, so, yeah. And um, the, he sat across from me on the bus, Teresa, the whole entire time praying, the whole time. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, so he oh. is, yeah. So he is a man of prayer. So it it's it's no shock to us that he would be completely behind this beautiful ministry of spreading um, Our Lady's Rosary. Wow, um, Teresa, let's let's move towards. Um, by the way, you mentioned your your work in hospice uh, ministry in, in nursing. Thank you so much for what you do, Jer- Jerry and I. We constantly want to thank all of the. Um, nurses and everyone that that is involved in helping people through very vulnerable difficult times and you know making that 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 journey from this world uh to to god willing heaven is is such a beautiful experience and those that can accompany the fine souls um i think it is just in- incredible it's a great gift that you've been given you obviously share it and you're you're doing it now with this ministry so thank you so very much for all you've done in the healthcare um uh industry and now with this in- this extraordinary ministry that's growing um wow so let's move on a little bit to these fantastic brochures. Um, Teresa, I don't know if you know this, but I, I've been in marketing for a long time, many years. I have never seen such beautifully produced brochures. Uh, wow. These brochures are so gorgeous with Our Lady uh, Star of the Sea on the front. I have the actual uh, pamphlet right in front of me with the rosary, the the mysteries of the rosary. And it is, it's just, it's almost, it almost has an iconic look to it. So tell us a little bit about how this came to be. Was this did you create this? Did somebody jump on board, another volunteer to produce this brochure or what? Yes. Thank you so much. I love those brochures too. I, they started because I wanted to get a really beautiful brochure with heavy cardstock and these brochures are very heavy and they feel good to hold and they don't fall apart. And so I found an artist in my area, Xander, and he agreed to create this beautiful artwork and he's Catholic and he has this love for a blessed mother and that really shines through in his work. And I have a friend who helps me with the graphic design, Julie Visco. She helps me with all the graphic design work. She's so good. And so with the two of them and I added the scripture inside, you know, I think that we created uh, pamphlets that were really beautiful that are practical, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking on your website here, Teresa. It's a beautifully done website, by the way, and I am just, I'm looking at the, the list of volunteers, and I'm scrolling, and I'm scrolling, and I'm scrolling. This is something that so many people have gotten behind. What, what do you think it is that people are seeing in this that is really causing their heart to say, this is something I want to be a part of? I think that the, when the volunteers start, sometimes they're a little bit hesitant because it's some unknown territory for them. And we always send a teammate. We volunteer in teams of two. And then we always have an experienced volunteer help new volunteers at the facility where they're praying. And what happens over time is that they get to know these residents and they get to love these residents. And I was just at a rosary with our volunteers a couple of days ago and 
one of the residents there named Barbara, she told our volunteer, Pam, before she left, she said, I love you. Thank you for coming. I'll see you next week. Mm. Beautiful. And I think that it really has meant so much to the volunteers because the residents love having them come to pray with them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Go ahead, Deb. Amazing. I just have to say, Teresa, you're making me think of my mom and being in um, assisted living and and memory care facilities. And, and, you know, as time went on and and the age-related illness took hold of her, she never forgot the rosary. Never. All the way to the end. Do do you find that a lot with with our seniors and our folks that are in these... um, these homes that they just, they, it, maybe it's muscle memory. I don't know what, but they know how to pray the rosary, even if their memory is fading. That is exactly what we experience. It is unbelievable. We have, like, I had this one patient and she couldn't talk. And if she did talk, it didn't make sense. She had dementia and we prayed the rosary and she could get the whole hair, Hail Mary out. And it was, I couldn't believe it. It was so beautiful. And the volunteers, that's what they experience all the time. The memory care residents who are no longer able to speak can sometimes say the prayers of the rosary. They still remember them. And my mom, who passed away with dementia last year, she prayed the rosary her whole life. And at the very last couple of weeks, I would still pray the rosary with her, and she could raise her right arm up a little Mm. to make the sign of the cross, and she was working at it, and that's the most she could do, but she knew that we were praying the rosary. Our soul responds to this. You know, God is ministering to all of us and our souls, even when it doesn't seem like we're outwardly praying it still affects our souls. Mm-hmm. Teresa Rodriguez is our guest here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie, a pre-recorded broadcast day. But as we love to do every chance we get, we give you original content, a brand new program never aired before. So please, we uh, we hope that you are enjoying this conversation and really getting a lot out of it. In fact, Teresa, before we even go a step further, um, can people who are listening right now, can they do this locally where they are? Uh, have, you, have you spread it out beyond Colorado? What would people do who are listening saying, you know, this is something I'd really like to be a part of? I would love that. I think that spreading it out is exactly what our Blessed Mother would really hope for. And what we have developed is a guide, some guidelines to start your own rosary team. And that's downloadable on the website. We're not charging for that right now. And we have our Denver rosary team volunteers available and that will pair with them so that they can have a volunteer to talk to who has been through this and can help them along the steps. Because what we have discovered is that different facilities, we're in almost 90 facilities now, different facilities work in their certain ways. And so we came up with a lot of tips and what to say and emails to write and, you know, just to kind of help people out with, with, making it a little bit easier for them. And mm-hmm. we're here, the Denver volunteers are here to help support them through this. So a few years you've been functioning well, it's growing by leaps and bounds. Um, so let me ask you this question, any conversions, any miracle stories, any like just surprising twists and turns of the Holy Spirit? Oh, that's a good question. I I would say one thing that really struck me was when I was praying with one resident and after we were done, she said to me, I grew up Catholic and that was the first Hail Mary I prayed in 45 years. Wow. Wow. I know that it was incredible. Mm. 
Isn't that amazing, Jerry? It, it is, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and as you're talking, both of you uh, relating your mothers, yeah, my mother as well, was in assisted living for the last few years of her life. And uh, if I'd ever go visit her, she was almost always uh, laying on her bed with her headphones on and her rosary in her hand. And she was mm-hmm. praying the rosary with Catholic Radio. Thanks be to God, Catholic Radio uh, makes that available to so many people. But um, uh, is this, Teresa, is this something you still are, are willing to offer or do offer, um, you know, digitally, like on Zoom calls for people who are maybe at a distance or have people who want to participate in praying or helping other people pray? Are there still online ones available, or did you kind of just go back to live and in person after the pandemic kind of settled down? We ended up going back to live and in person because that was what the facilities were asking us for. We, we could definitely do Zoom rosaries. You know, those are so convenient and easy to do if there was a need for them. And, you know, hopefully hopefully the volunteers will be able to keep going back in live. I think that the, the residents, that the human interaction is really important, and they really get a lot out of that and value that. And for one example, I, I was just there on Tuesday morning, with some volunteers praying the rosary and oh they did it so beautifully they had this big circle of residents and while the volunteers were praying the rosary they were going moving from each resident and placing their hands on their shoulder or their arm and they would say a whole mary right next to the resident and the residents would gaze at the volunteers and you know, they, were, they would wake up and they would unfold their crossed arms and they looked so happy and peaceful with the volunteers being right next to them, really caring for them and loving them. It was amazing. Okay, so Jerry and I have a question, and we know it's from the Holy Spirit because Jerry actually typed the question over to me. I was thinking the exact same question, Teresa, so we believe that's the Holy Spirit. So um, on Take Two, uh, our Take Two family know that we always cover the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between. Why do, why do we do that? Because we want, we want to cover things from all angles. We want the real, raw truth. And so we got a couple questions to ask you about practically unfolding this ministry. So the first question is, and the reason why I'm saying it like this, or like first question and second question, because you're going to hear the music in a little bit. So we're going to hit the pause button. So I'll give you time to think about this. But the first question is when, when this ministry is, is in action at these, at these senior places, right? These senior homes, do you have other residents or family members that aren't Catholic uh, that that want to be involved, or they they jump in because they they feel they can feel the Holy Spirit, or they see the dedicated prayer prayer lives of all these seniors. Okay, that's the first question. The second question is now here's where we flip it a little bit to cover every angle. Um, do you ever get facilities that say no? We're not going to do this. This is way too Catholic. You know, you got you're going to have to have some parameters on how you do this ministry because, you know, if we do this for you, we're going to have to open it up for everybody else with their faith, you know, beliefs and stuff like that. So, you know, think about that for a moment because. I think that when you say, Jerry, I will obviously you agree because you wrote over the same question. But um, when you say, Jerry, that we have to know these things when we're going into ministry, we have to know what we're up against, who is with us, who is against us. Right. And so really to, to just make um, the ministry, you know, move smoothly. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you say, Jerry? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And uh, we can continue that line of thinking here in just a moment. You hear the music? That is break time here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Our guest here on this pre-recorded broadcast is Teresa Rodriguez with The Rosary Teams. Again, you will find them online. Beautiful website, therosaryteam.org. Maybe it's something you want to bring to your area. We'll continue in just a minute. We told you you'd get a lot out of this pre-recorded broadcast. We want to thank our producer, Ace McKay. He put this all together. He does such an amazing job 
getting these this, these new content shows out there. So if you can take it from there, he'll, he'll hand the torch over to you and then you spread it far and wide on your social media platforms. That's a good use of social media. We're talking with our dear friend, Teresa Rodriguez and her beautiful ministry, uh, the Rosary Team. And then Teresa, I asked you two questions before the break. Um, I gave you, I, I hope, ample time to think of, of uh, the answers and examples because I think it's important we know what we're up against when we go out there trying to spread um, the message, God's message and Our Lady's message. I agree. We have residents who come to the Rosary who are not Catholic and do not know how to pray the Rosary, and they learn over time. A lot of times they know the Our Father, so they can participate in the Our Father. I would say most of the time it is Catholics, but it doesn't need to be. Anybody can participate in the Rosary, and we love it when anybody comes, any of the residents. And for the facilities, for (laughs) getting into facilities, you know, it is definitely not 100% open doors. There's no question about that. Some facilities, you know, we don't we don't know who is answering the phone or their faith background. You know, sometimes we don't get called back. I would say that's a lot of times we don't get called back. And sometimes there's just, you know, reasons, you know, excuses of why we can't come in. We don't hear, you know, exactly those details. And... Um, Sometimes we just get a yes right away, but usually it's not just one call to a facility saying, oh, we want to come in and pray the rosary, and they give us a time and day, and we come come in that week. Usually it it takes a lot of persistence. You know, for example, there was a facility in, in my parish boundaries, and I, it took me two years to get into that facility to bring the rosary to the residents, and I just could could not get get in. the The um, person that I needed to work with kept telling me no, and finally one day I called back, and she was no longer there. And the new person that took her role was thrilled and so excited and said yes right away. And so it took us two years, but we were really persistent and calling, you know, obviously not every day, n- nobody wants to be called like that, but, you know, we would call every few months and to check in to see if, if there's staff changes. When, when we get no's from a facility, we know that there's a lot of staff changes that happen and maybe the new staff will say yes. And a lot of times they do. So, mm-hmm. you know, this happens over time. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. Persistence. Yeah, you got to keep going back to see if somebody's open to it. Absolutely. Um, Teresa, I got to tell you and Jerry a funny story. And of course, our Take Two family that's listening right now. So you, as you were as you were talking about getting into facilities, I started chuckling and I said, Jerry, I've got it. I got to share this with Teresa. She'll get a kick out of this. When my mother, uh, w- when we were interviewing places or looking at places um, for, an, you know, an, um, assisted assisted living and then slash memory care facility, I was at the front desk of several of these facilities and my mother would tool around the whole place and look at all the, you know, the bingo and the eating areas and all that kind of stuff. And I'm at the front desk checking out some other stuff. And I said, can I see your cable lineup? And they said, excuse me. And they said, can I see your cable lineup? And they said, oh, you mean all the cable channels we provide in the apartments? And I said, yeah, can I see them all? And uh, with the one building my mother really loved, um, they did not have EWTN on the cable lineup. And so I said to them, oh, that's a shame. That's so, that's so unfortunate. I said, we were ready to sign the lease. And they said, really, what's stopping you? I said, you don't have a very important channel here. They go, what's that? I go, EWTN. They said, we'll get it today. Can you sign the lease? I said, yes. <laughs> and Wonderful. That, and that's the truth. And they put EWTN on. But the funny thing about it is my mother became instantly popular in that building because every Catholic would come up to her and they say, are you the one responsible for getting EWTN? UTN. We're so grateful. <laughs> oh, but that, they are. They're so grateful. I've had yeah. residents ask me for that specifically, mm-hmm. that they were trying to get EWTN at their facility. 
Yeah. It's so cute yeah. because, you know, you don't think you don't think about that, right? You're not thinking about that at the time when you're looking for an, an, an apartment or a facility. You're not even thinking that. And it's so important because they these uh, seniors, they depend on Catholic radio and television. I mean, it was a lifeline for my mom. And Jerry, it was for your mom as well, right? It was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, great conversation we're having with Teresa Rodriguez here. No calls today. We are not live, but it is a new show. Original content for you here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on EWTN. Thank you, affiliates, for carrying the program. And we are having, a, a, as I said, a great discussion about the Rosary Teams. And you'll find them at therosaryteam.org. And Teresa Rodriguez is the founder and the head of that beautiful, uh, I, I'm going to call it a movement right now, Teresa, because it seems like it's the Holy Spirit's really the kind of the wind in your sails right now. And I'd be curious to know as, as these volunteers, you know, they go and spend this particular amount of time, you know, m- primarily praying the rosary with the, uh, the people in the nursing homes. Do they find that that creates, you know, an even deeper bond? You know, it's, it's that it becomes more than just, you know, going in and saying some prayers with these beautiful people, but they actually develop friendships and deeper relationships. They do. They develop their relationship with these seniors. And, you know, these these residents, this is really the last place that they will be in their final days. And many of the volunteers go through the death of these residents. They miss them. And I had one volunteer just call me, and she said that, one of the residents coming to the rosary that she really loved, she no longer comes and she doesn't know where she was. And she found that she was in the hospital and she doesn't know how to get a hold of her. Right. So they really care for these residents. And what we ended up doing what the rosary team ended up doing is developing a set of bereavement prayers so that the volunteers could pray for that person who has passed away with the residents because the residents know each other. And when, when one of their friends pass away, they, they grieve for that. And they, Mm -hmm. they come to the volunteers and then they say, Oh, I, you know, my friend just passed away. And so at least we can offer them some bereavement prayers to acknowledge the passing and the death of their friend. Teresa, I, 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 if it's okay with you, and, and I'm sure it's, it's going to be great with Jerry because we talk about it all the time, I just switching gears just a little bit because of your, your extensive hospice uh, work that you've done, um, just share a little bit. Uh, we, you know, you touched upon it, but this is, you know, people are going to pass away. You know, this is, it's, it's, it's life, you know, and they're getting, they're getting older and God's going to call them home eventually. Tell us a little bit about what, what was that like? What was that work like? And can you share anything about being, I'm, you know, I'm sure you were at the bedside of many, many, many folks as they took their last breath. Can you tell us, you know, the difference between those that had strong faith? What was the death like? Those that, didn't have much faith, some that were struggling. Can you, can you share with us um, some of the details of that? Because I think as all of us, as we all get older, I mean, let's face it, we're, we're going to have to deal with this. And it's, it would be important to know from experts like yourself, what it, what, what do we, what do we expect? What can we expect? That's a really good question. That's a huge question. Um, So many examples and stories, you know, that could be a whole show. And, you know, I guess certain things that, you know, kind of stick in my mind about that is that how we die, our our faith, how we live our faith is how we are going to die. And I know that a lot of people believe in deathbed conversions, and I know that there are some of them. I, I know so many listeners will have an example for some of them. But that's not generally what I saw at all. I saw people die the way they lived. And, for example, I had a patient, and she grew up Catholic, and she did not practice her Catholic faith or any faith. And the final few days that she was dying, I asked her family and friends that were in the room if you know, she would like to have a priest to come in and do sacrament of the sick. And, 
and because she was Catholic, and they said, absolutely not. No, that's not what she would want. And so those family and friends were advocating for her for how she lived her life. And another example I have is that the other day, a resident was praying the rosary. We were praying the rosary, and one resident was sleeping, and this happens. This resident slept from the beginning of the rosary to the end of the rosary. I didn't see her stir. And this is this happens. This is normal. And that resident was there. That resident was wheeled into that rosary room because she had said yes many times before to come to the rosary. So the staff knew to bring her. Another example I have is that I had a patient that was was getting close to dying. You know, he had a, a couple weeks left, and, but he did not have relationships with some close family members anymore. They, those were severed, and he did not want to reach out to them, and and he, you know, was just not happy. And his wife had told me that, you know, they were Methodist, and, you know, that's how they... Um, they practiced, well, you know, a few hours before he was dying, his extended family came in and they just mentioned that, no, he was Catholic. He grew up Catholic. And so we were able that the family members wanted, they advocated for him to have a priest. So I called up the priest who served that facility and it was a blizzard out. It was bad. And I knew my patient did not have very long. He was getting close. And the priest, Father Tim, he got there in the middle of the blizzard and gave him sacrament of the sick mm. because that family advocated for that patient. And I really think that saved his soul. Wow. That is absolutely powerful. Uh, Teresa, hold on just a minute. i got to make one quick announcement here, and then we'll get back to our conversation with Teresa Rodriguez. She is with the Rosary Team. Um, again, they're at therosaryteam.org, uh, taking the, the beautiful prayer of our Blessed Mother, devotion to Our Lady, into nursing homes. And as you can hear, folks, transforming lives in the process. So please do uh, stay with us here for the remainder of this conversation. But first, I want to let you know that uh, weeknights at 9 Eastern Time on EWTN Radio and Television. It's EWTN News Nightly with Tracy Sable. I have watched this for years. You can join Tracy for the Catholic News Perspective on top stories and reports from around the world. That's EWTN News Nightly with Tracy Sable, weeknights, 9 Eastern Time on EWTN Radio and Television. And, Teresa, just to stay on that uh, that theme that you were just talking about there, um, I'm, I'm sure you probably had hopes and aspirations when you started this that it would be more than just the praying of the rosary with people, but it, it sounds like it's turned out to be um, life-changing and maybe soul-saving for a lot of people. So talk about that just a little bit more and how maybe this has changed, even impacted the spiritual lives of the volunteers who experience these things. Oh, I know. It's so beautiful. The I really thought that we were just there for the residents, you know, that we were serving the residents, which we are. And the volunteers repeatedly tell me that I had one just tell me this morning that this is one of the best hours that she uses in her week. This is one of the best ways she spends her time. It's very significant. Um, trying to bring hope to you know, people that, that live in these bi- big buildings that we drive by, that we don't even know what's going on in them unless we have a family or friend in them. And, you know, they can be lonely or bored. And so the volunteers, their mission is to bring them God, the presence of God, and through that, bring them hope in God with that salvation that there's so much more, there's so much more to our lives than just this earth, that we were made for God and for heaven someday. 
Amen to that, sister. Okay, so somebody's listening right now, and they're feeling that um, kind of nudge in their spirit, and they're thinking, "I want to belong to one of these one of these groups in my area." Um, I love what Teresa is saying, and like I, I on your online presence is excellent. Um, but I will tell you your website. But I will tell you these brochures are incredible, <laughs> absolutely incredible. I I absolutely you did everything. It just feels right, and I you. You just, I feel like you had heavenly assistance with these brochures. I'm telling you, I just, it, it's, it's weird how when you get a certain thing in, in your hand and you start to uh, flip through the pages or look at it and you think there's something unique about this. It feels anointed. So let's say somebody wants to be a part of this ministry. What do they do first? Do they go to your website? Do they um, contact you personally, Teresa? Do they contact your ministry leader? Um, how, how, how does one go about getting involved? in their area, and then, of course, obviously, where you live in the Denver area. We would love for them to belong to the Rosary team and to get involved because, as I said earlier, there's over 50,000 nursing homes in the United States, and that's only in the United States. There's many others throughout the world. And they can go, they would need to go right to the website, therosaryteam.org, and there's a volunteer, a way just to sign up and volunteer. And if the volunteer lives in the Denver Archdiocese area, that's easy. They fill out that form and we do the coordination because we're here. And if they live anywhere else, we will help them do the coordination. And that would be them um, reaching out to a facility that's near them. They want Mm -hmm. to volunteer at at a nursing home really close to them to make it easy for them so they don't have to drive and we teach them how to find volunteers to go with, and we have some tips and how to work with the facilities and the bereavement prayers, so they can do all of that online to get started. Yeah, as you were talking, uh, just curious question came to my mind, Teresa, and that is, you know, how do you sort of keep a, a handle on this? Because as it grows and expands, you know, hopefully God willing beyond, you know, well beyond Colorado and elsewhere, you have to, as you were kind of indicating there, you have to sort of know who it is that you're bringing on as volunteers. You have to vet people a little bit, and then you probably got, you know, certain you know procedures and, and, and ways you want to see things done. So do you do you have to keep a close eye on that? Do you, do you really, have, do you have like a point person, a coordinator? for each of these uh, outreaches to any particular nursing home? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, we have we have volunteer coordinators, but this is growing so fast, and I just place it in our Blessed Mother's hands, you know, to um, find the help and the support. We, we really need to hire um, volunteer coordinators. That's what we really need to do, um, but we need support for that. So I don't know what the future unfolds for this, and I know that if our Blessed Mother really is planning for this to grow, that that, that will happen. Well, and you know, I, I this throughout this conversation, I, I kind of uh, overemphasized your uh, materials that you're using for the rosary. And people may say, well, Debbie, there's a million pamphlets on the, on the internet of, of the rosary. There, there are, and I agree, but, but there's certain ministries that you just know when you've been in um, religious education for many years, you can tell when, when ministries have heavenly support and assistance and in my humble opinion, Teresa, and you know, you and I have had many conversations. Um, your, this ministry, your effort behind this, the way it has grown, the look, the feel, the structure, there's something very unique about it. And I believe you're getting heaven, heavenly assistance. And that is so beautiful. And that's why it must keep going. And so the, I think Jerry's question is so important on how, how are you structuring it as it grows um, to keep it where you can get, um, you know, the right people in place uh, with good intentions and everything so that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't spiral into other areas. And so that's, I think Jerry's question was spot on because the, you know, our lady, there's no limits with God. We know that. 
And so I always, I always, uh, crack up when people say, well, I want to do this ministry and I, I just want to keep it really small. Well, if it's got, if it has to do with God, it's got to go big. We serve a big God, right, Teresa? <laughs> That's so true. I, you know, I had just said yes to these two volunteers, right? Mm -hmm. Two volunteers one day a week, and, you know, that wasn't the plan. And and my heart was wanting something more, too. And, you know, our our Blessed Mother keeps showing me the path of what to do next. And, you know, certain things, like you were asking earlier, like, you know, doors that open, like, I have had so many of those that I'm just amazed. Like, one day I was really struggling with a website. I needed to get something done on it. And I, I was working for a couple of weeks and I just couldn't get it done. And I was talking to a volunteer and I was just saying a prayer. Oh my gosh, you know, please help me just get this part done. And then five minutes later, I'm talking with a volunteer and she said to me, Oh, I'm a website designer. <laughs> <laughs> right. right, Exactly. <laughs> like, Oh my gosh. It's amazing. So those kind of things keep happening. Mm-hmm. It's it's just amazing. They're yeah. just all miracles. Yeah. It reminds me of Mother Angelica with, with EWTN, Jerry, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, trust, total trust in God. I mean, if God puts a vision on your heart, he will uh, He will write the checks. As they say, you know, if God inspires a project, he'll finance it. And uh, thanks, thanks be to God, uh, it, it appears that he has assisted you in every possible way up to this point, Teresa. But uh, to that end, I mean, if people are listening right now, you obviously have some... Uh, bills to pay. I know the uh, people who go into the nursing homes are volunteers, and you probably have a lot of volunteer help in many other areas. But still, you know, there's there's got to be a, a dollar or two here or there that has to be spent on something. How can people, pr- you know, in addition to prayer, how can people maybe support the work that you're doing? Oh, we would love to be able to have support and pay all the bills that come in. And there's a gift. Um, tab on the website, you can make a gift, a donation right there, and um, signing up to be a patron would be wonderful with a recurring monthly gift. And there's also Adopt a Rosary Team Volunteer. We have, if you adopt a Rosary Team Volunteer, you'll be assigned with one volunteer, and she will pray, or he will pray for your intentions, too. So there's a lot of ways to support us to help us grow this ministry which is, I'm seeing on your website, growing by leaps and bounds. I'm, mm-hmm. um, I'm looking, October 2019, when you started, you had one facility, two volunteers. Um, October of 2022, 102 volunteers, 40 facilities. That grew by 100%, Teresa, mm-hmm. over just the last year. That has got to be um, really special to your heart, you know, as you see God, what God is accomplishing through this. Oh, it's just incredible. We, we are so thrilled every time. One of our, you know, volunteer coordinators, we get into another facility and get a team of two more volunteers to to start praying the rosary. It is so huge. It's such a miracle that we can still do this in our day and time, that there's people who want to do this and people who want to be receiving the prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So, Teresa, thank you so much for spending this time with us. The Take Two family is—they're so special to us. They're deep in our in our hearts, and we want to um, have um, episodes and broadcasts and pre-recorded um, new content shows for them, so that they can learn and grow and deepen their faith and get involved in ministry. And just you know, the sky's the limit with God. You know, it's it, you, you just. We, God wants all of us, right, Teresa? He wants all of us. And we, we have to get off the sidelines, um, not, be, not be a spectator any longer, and get in, on, get in, on, in the game. And, and Teresa, you're doing that, and you're doing that in a big way. We love you so very much. We would like to have—we're going to take you up on that offer. Um, we would like to have you back for a, a part two talking about hospice, because um, our Take Two family has asked us to have— um, repeated broadcasts on that. So please, if you can come back also, uh, make sure you give our love to, uh, Leo, your husband and the family. Also, when you see Archbishop Aquila, tell him uh, from Jerry and I, thank you so much for supporting this ministry because we love him. He's a great leader. Um, and for him to be behind this, that, that is huge. And Jerry, 
You wanted to ask Teresa something. Well, I thought maybe we could just end with a Hail Mary. I thought that might be appropriate. We have just about a minute to go before the show ends, but what do you think about that, Teresa? Oh, we just, I love it. I love it. Our, Thank you. Lady, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary. Mary, Mother of God, pray for pray us for sinners, sinners now, and, now at the and at the hour of our death. Of our death. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Teresa, thank you so much. I, I echo everything Debbie said. Please give Leo our love as well, and it's been just fantastic spending this time together with you. Appreciate your time. God bless you. Um, We're going to talk all about relationships tomorrow here on Mm -hmm. Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. This has been a pre-recorded broadcast. We are back live with you tomorrow. So any relationship you want to talk about, have those uh, conversations in your mind and in your heart. Please do join us. Until then, I want to thank uh, the affiliates for carrying the show. Thank again to our producer, Ace McKay. For Debbie Giorgiani, I am Jerry Usher wishing you a beautiful and blessed day. And St. Joseph and our Blessed Mother, please pray for us. Thank you.